Good morning, Digit fam. Adam Dowd here, closing out another week and another month of your daily dose of tech and geekery, which means the Digit Monthly is right around the corner, followed by IFA, followed by Apple, followed by Microsoft, followed by Halloween, followed by... Okay, I might be getting a little ahead of myself. Sorry about that. It is August 30th, 2019, and this is your Digit Daily. Tristan admonished me this morning, asking me not to downplay the story because, as I've often said on this show, I don't really care about privacy. But this story is about security, not privacy. I don't care if a website knows if I like falafel and wants to send me an ad for a falafel and... Now I want a falafel. But our top story today is scary. Actually, the word terrifying probably wouldn't be overstating it all that much. Google's Project Zero team, whose sole purpose it is to find software vulnerabilities, found a huge gaping hole in iOS. According to Project Zero, 14 zero-day exploits were found in the wild on websites designed to passively attack any website visitor. These unnamed websites were just waiting for an unsuspecting iOS device to show up, and when it did, these bugs got into the iPhone and harvested reams of data from a user, including likely usernames and passwords stored on an iPhone's keychain. But that's not all. A partial partial list of apps being harvested for data include Facebook, Outlook, Gmail, Telegraph, WhatsApp, and Skype. Yeah, I know. People still use Skype. I I don't get it, but they do. Oh, and by the way, once these bugs got onto your phone, they stayed until the iPhone rebooted. And seriously, who reboots their phones these days? There are those that suspect state-sponsored bodies might be behind all this, government-funded spying folks, and there are some who didn't necessarily suspect foreign state bodies either. Grab your tinfoil, kids. It's time to make a hat. So what does that mean? Well, if you've updated your iPhone or your iPad, it doesn't really mean anything anymore. Apple very quietly patched these bugs back in February. We're only just now getting word of this. But these bugs were active for years. And while it seems like the websites in question were fairly limited in scope, we're still talking about potentially millions of affected users. It's a giant not good salad and we're all out of ranch dressing. So if you're not sure if you've updated your iPhone, check. Right now, I'll wait. As for the far-reaching implications of this, it's frankly too huge to grasp in a seven-hour podcast, let alone a seven-minute podcast. Needless to say, this is really, really bad, and fortunately, it has since been fixed, but this is an exploit and data breach in the neighborhood of Equifax. It's that bad, people. As for a response... I fully expect Apple to get out in front of this, and I frankly find it surprising that it hasn't already. Back in February when this was first patched, the PR team should have been put to work preparing a response. What will that response be? Who knows? Judging by Apple's recent behavior, it'll be something along the lines of, whoopsie, but hey, we fixed it because we care. Also, this wasn't even our only top story of the day. In a delicious stroke of irony, invitations went out yesterday for Apple's next iPhone event on September 10th, where we'll get three new iPhones, now called Pro, because of course they are, and we'll probably see a new MacBook sans crappy keyboard. We will not see 5G yet, that'll be at least next year, and I don't remember what podcast I was listening to, but one of the broadcasters on that show brought up a good point. It's way too early for a 5G iPhone, and the way you can tell that is because other OEMs are still releasing 5G variants of its flagships. So you've got the Note 10, and you've got the Note 10 5G. You've got the Sony Xperia 1, and the Sony Xperia 5G, or at least we probably will next week. When OEMs start shipping only the 5G variants of their phones without also releasing a, quote, standard version, that's when we'll see the 5G iPhone. And man, I really wish I could remember what podcast that was. It might have been the Geared Up podcast with Andrew Edwards and John Rettinger. And even if it wasn't, that's a good show and you should go check it out anyway. This podcast not sponsored by the Geared Up podcast. So anyway, we've learned that new iPhones are good. Old, non-updated iPhones are really, really bad. And we've also learned that it is time for the Roundup! You may have heard of the Samsung Galaxy Home, Samsung's Bixby-powered smart speaker. 
You may have heard of it, but you've never actually seen it, because despite being talked about for what seems like forever at this point, Samsung still has not put its Weber Grill lookalike speaker out on the market. Now, Samsung is beta testing a Samsung Home Mini speaker in its home Korean market. And just what the hell, Samsung? You have to have a speaker before you can have a mini speaker. Microsoft is one of the most wishy-washy tech giants there is, and if you want proof, look no further than Windows, and more specifically, how Windows behaves on a 2-in-1 or a tablet. I have a Lenovo ThinkPad 2-in-1, and frankly, I enjoy the tablet experience right now. There are some tweaks to be made, but now Microsoft is walking back some of the tablet-optimized experience, like, for example, keeping the desktop in full view when in tablet mode. I mean, that's fine, but this is just another frustrating change to a user interface that never really feels solid, and that might be part of the reason why tablet PCs are not more popular than they are today. You have to learn them, and then relearn them, and then relearn them, and then relearn them again. Pick a lane, Microsoft. Ring doorbells are a great way to see what's happening around your home, but it's also a great way to show others what's happening around your home. And it's a great way to show police what's going on around your home. And did the message take a turn there? Yeah, it kind of took a turn there. So, for the record, police cannot access your Ring doorbell feed that we know of, unless you share it with the Neighbors app. But Amazon is collaborating with police departments to encourage citizens to install Ring doorbells and the Neighbors app. And by the way, it's giving police the doorbells to do it. And it's coaching police on what to say about those doorbells in press releases and on social media. I'll be honest, and you'll notice that this is a continuing theme throughout this podcast. The Roundup isn't the right format to fully discuss this issue, so hit the link in the show notes and read the full story. Take it all together, this really doesn't look good. Porsche is expanding its subscription-based car rental program to four more cities beyond the pilot city of Atlanta. For $2,100 per month, you can have a Porsche, any Porsche, for as long as you want, and swap them as often as you want. Now, I know what you're thinking. $2,100 is a lot of money. For that, you may as well just buy a Porsche, and you're not completely wrong. But when you think about it, owning a car is a pain. You have to park it, store it, maintain it. And years later, it's worth basically nothing. But with a program like this, you can have an SUV for the work week and a Porsche 911 for the weekends. And you can get constantly newer cars in different colors, different features, and they never break down. While $2,100 is way too much money for commoners like me to consider, when you think about it, there is something compelling about a car rental program like this. This podcast not sponsored by Porsche. And finally, Eric Cantona, a former footballer, received the UEFA President's Award, which, according to Wikipedia, quote, recognizes outstanding achievements, professional excellence, and exemplary personal qualities. The accolade, first introduced by UEFA in 1998, is usually awarded annually to a football personality who is deemed to advance the game's development and success. Great. So Eric Cantona received that award. Then he was asked his thoughts. Then, he said this. Uh, as flies to wanton boys, we are for the gods. They kill us for the sport. Soon the science will not only be able to slow down the aging of the cells, soon the science will, be, will fix the cells to the state. And so we will become Eternal. Only accidents, crimes, wars will still kill us. But unfortunately, crimes and wars will multiply. I love football. Thank you. Um, what? And while it should be mentioned that my general rule of thumb on YouTube is never read the comments, in this case, you should absolutely read the comments. Because inside that sound clip were some nuggets of genius. I could explain it here, but again, 
recurring theme, this is only a seven minute podcast. So hit up the link in the show notes and check out the hidden meaning behind what seemed to be just some random musings. So that's going to do it for today's Digit Daily. And since you're definitely going to need to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again on Monday. <laughs>